Now, <clears throat> let's talk some New York State Regents requirements. Here we have your Regents reference tables. In the front page you have your radioactive decay data with your radioactive isotopes and disintegration processes and half-lives. Here are the radioactive isotopes, the beginning isotope. Here's where they get disintegrated into their stable products. Here are the stable products, the disintegration products to be more specific. Uh, here are the half-lives, the time it takes for half of the radioactive isotope to convert itself to the disintegration product. Now I, I took the liberty of doing the math here, taking the scientific notation and putting it into just regular numbers of years. All right, Let me go back here. So here is 5.7 times 10 to the third. It's only 5,700 years, but 1.3 times 10 to the ninth is 1.3 billion years. Right? The scientific notation, the 10 to the 3rd and 10 to the 9th, tell you how many zeros or how many places the decimal point has moved to the right. So there's basically four ways the Regents shows radioactive decay to you or asks the question. Right? Number, the first way is they'll give you a chart and they'll say that the radioactive decay of this isotope has uh, this number of atoms present and here's the time and as time goes on the shape of the curve is always going to be an exponential but opposite so you're starting off with a lot and after one half-life you get half the amount and each time it gets halved and halved again and halved again so your question would be What's the half-life of isotope X? Well, simply, you'd find the radioactive atoms, the number of radioactive atoms present. <clears throat> you would look here and say that 1,000 is the most, or you're starting off with 1,000 atoms. And after one half-life, you're going to see that 500 is left over, because 500 is one half of 1,000 and you would read down to see that it took three hours three hours is the half-life of this radioactive atom isotope x that's the chart way number two the visual representation here we have a model of carbon 14 the open or blank squares is the radioactive part the black darkened squares are the disintegration products Right here, if you were to count up all the boxes, you'd have 24 boxes. And at this point, you'd have to count to see how many radioactive carbons you have and how many disintegration products. Uh, it's asking you to shade in the correct number of carbon-14 boxes to represent additional disintegration product after the second half-life. So we know the ratio of radioactive boxes to half-lives where at the beginning, all 24 boxes would be radioactive carbon, right? They'd all be open. And at the, after the first half-life, we know that half of the radioactive carbon is going to be a disintegration product. It's shown here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 products and 12 radioactive carbons. That means we're at one half-life. Now, to get to two, it wants us to shade in the additional boxes. At two half-lifes, you're going to have six radioactive carbon boxes and at two half-lifes, that it means that you're going to have six radioactive carbon boxes because you're halving 12. Right? You're halving the amount of radioactive isotopes each time. So I'd count out 
one, two, three, four, five, six. And the other six boxes I'm going to shade in. Now this re visual representation is showing me that I have six radioactive carbons out of 24. Therefore, I'm at a fraction of one fourth and I'm at two half-lives down the road after the death of whatever we're measuring here. The third way they show it is percentages. So here we have the disintegration product of isotope X. This is the percentage of stable disintegration product. Okay, and it's asking for the years it takes for only 25% of the radioactive isotope to remain. The problem here is that it only gives you the disintegration product percentage. You have to find the opposite or the radioactive isotope. So how would you do this? I would I just created another column and labeled it radioactive isotope X, right? Because that's what we're trying to find. Now as the process uh, happens of the decay, radioactive isotope X is going to go from a um, is going to be at a hundred and the percentage of stable disintegration product is going to be at zero. As the number of half-lives increase at one half-life it's going to be 50-50, at two half-lives it's going to be 25-75, three half-lives 12.587.5 and you know the rest because I, I just showed this earlier. So when you're determining the number of years it only takes for 25% of the radioactive isotope to be left to remain, you find radioactive isotope 25. You'd read across to the time in years and 11,400 years. Boom. The fourth type of, of question or the way they're going to ask this question is they give you the mass of how much you're starting with and the half-lives. So, and they ask you to determine the number of grams of carbon remaining in this sample at 17,100 years. So we know it's carbon-14. We have to employ our reference tables here and see that carbon-14 has one half-life of 5,700 years, okay? We know it's carbon. One half-life is 5,700. And it wants the number of grams remaining after 17,100. So I could easily just grab my calculator here. And I take 5,700, multiply it by two. This is two half-lives, 11,400. It doesn't match up. So I'm going to add another 5,700 years. There we go. That matches. So we're now at three half-lives, or three times 5,700 years. So we go over here to our number of half-lives. We have three. The mass left. Boom. Here's the demonstration, one half-life, two half-lives, three half-lives, read across, eight grams of carbon left, boom, there it is. And one last question before I leave you guys. Identify the stable disintegration product of the radioactive isotope of carbon-14. Here we have carbon-14, identify the stable disintegration product. So we have to go to our reference tables. We'd see that carbon-14 is the radioactive isotope. The disintegration product is here, nitrogen-14. This is just a basic, do you know how to read, right? <laughs> Stable disintegration product right here, nitrogen. This is a correct answer, or if you're going to type it in a question online, 
you can also write nitrogen dash 14. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to watch this again if you need to see the information again. Go through your questions online. I'll be posting more videos on how to do more questions, so stay tuned. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content. If you're my student, I'll hear from you in Google Classroom. If you're a random viewer, thanks for watching.